I am Jess Baptiste the Sixth, aka Fu. Listen up, Earthling aliens. I'm about to conquer this planet. No More Heroes 3 is an action adventure hack and slash game from Suda51 and Grasshopper Manufacture. It takes place 12 years after the first game, the aptly named No More Heroes, nine years after No More Heroes 2, and two years after Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. A massive thanks to channel regular Dave Morris for his review of this one. I'll make sure to pop a link to his excellent channel Saved X Gaming. Go and check it out. With Earth under threat from a group of alien assassins that claim to be galactic superheroes led by Prince Fu, a blue giant with a luscious mane but evil tendencies, it's up to Travis Touchdown and Otaku and the previous top ranked assassin of UAA to save the day. But before you do so, you've got to climb the galactic superhero rankings. So, does this game score a touchdown or is it a travesty? Let's find out. All-star battle of space versus Earth. Let's destroy it. Full disclaimer, I've only previously played the first game of the series, both on Switch and Wii, but haven't beaten them. This, however, did not affect how I followed the story, so if you haven't played the previous games, then that shouldn't be of concern. That being said, some plot points may have more impact if you have previous knowledge of the characters from past iterations. We won't give away any story elements outside of the basic overview provided at the start of this review, and we'll only show gameplay footage from the first three episodes, but the story was very enjoyable, with a fantastic cast of characters. The bulk of the gameplay comes in two forms, exploration and combat. Each of the 10 episodes has you challenge one of the galactic superheroes, but before you can enter the battle, you must raise funds by undertaking missions, including combat challenges and mental tasks around the different maps. When exploring the city of Santa Destroy, you have a motorbike that you can summon at any point to get around quicker. Riding the bike's a lot of fun as you get a real sense of speed, especially when using the nitro and the Y button. And it reminded me of the Akira bike. Holding B will let you do a sharp turn, although sometimes the bike will turn the opposite way to the direction direction that was pressed. The map shows icons that allow you to pinpoint where the missions can be located, as well as other locations such as the sushi shop and also toilets, which act as your save points. Some things that make traversing the map easier are the inclusion of a fast travel system between different areas, and you can also set waypoints. An episode typically tasks you with beating a set number of designated matches before raising enough funds to earn your way to a boss battle. The tasks to earn money can vary from unclogging toilets to mowing lawns, performing fetch quests, or entering a combat challenge. The combat is the real meat of this game. You'll fight in a single room with a set of enemies to take down, and these come at you in waves. The analog sticks are to control Travis and the camera, Y is for your weak attack and your beam katana, X is for a strong attack, B is your jump, and A is a dodge move. You can use the left trigger to target an enemy, as well as block, which is useful when there are many of them, and you can use the right stick to change who you're targeting. When an enemy's health is low, an arrow will appear to prompt you to move the right stick in a direction which will trigger a finishing move. After you hit one of these, a slot machine will appear and matching three symbols will give you an additional perk, such as temporary invincibility or stronger attacks. When playing with detached Joy-Cons, you can use motion controls to trigger these finishing moves. Hallelujah! And your beam katana has limited power, indicated by the meter on the top right. When this is depleted, you can charge it up by holding R and waggling the right stick or using motion. There will also be times where your opponents will get dazed. In these instances, you can grab them using ZR and then pushing the sticks in the direction prompted by the game triggers a wrestling move. Other special attacks can be used holding the buttons, and while you begin with only one of these, the remaining three are suddenly handed to you all at once. One other really cool special move allows you to summon a mech. Refilling of your health comes in the form of eating sushi, and after each battle you earn different spoils and currencies. The first of these is called Utopi Coins, and they're used for purchasing items but also entering those ranked battles. The other is known as the WESN, World End Supernova, which is is used to upgrade Travis's attributes, such as maximum health or new moves. And these spoils could also be used to purchase stat changes for your character. Now the combat sections have a nice flow to them, and they feel really fluid. The controls are intuitive, and I didn't once have any confusion over what I was doing. Everything just felt natural. Performing a perfect dodge, 
activates a slow-mo effect, which encouraged me to play a little bit more aggressively, giving a nice risk-first reward aspect and made the fights more exhilarating. The fact they're using aliens in this game leads to some very interesting designs in the enemies and adds some variety to the fights. The structure of each episode boils down to just exploring the city's different areas, looking for battles or jobs, which did begin to feel a little samey by the end of the game, as I started to see familiar enemy fights and the fee for entering the ranked battles got higher, so in that regard there is a tiny bit of grinding, but when you meet your opponents for the ranked battles it gets a lot more exciting. Each one brings a different twist to the gameplay and has a unique way of defeating them which had the bonus effect of making each one memorable. Strangely, as I progressed through the game, the battle arenas while grinding for funds would get much more difficult, but the boss battles themselves became easier and I'd often beat them on my first or second try. But when you do fall in battle and choose to retry, you get a wheel to spin and you'll either get a bonus or a penalty depending on where it lands. You could restart with increased attack or your power meter on zero, for example. Each time you die on the same battle, the wheel spins progressively slower to the point where you are essentially choosing which one to land on. If you land on your cat Jean, then you can continue the battle where you left off, but with full health. While this is hilarious, it did remove a lot of the tension from the battles and made me not care so much about losing, as being able to select this cat on the wheel each retry made it feel like I had infinite health overall. As it stands though, the combat in this game is a lot of fun and the controls are extremely responsive. It was always satisfying to pull off attacks and dodges at the right times and the variety of enemies and special moves kept it interesting. The overworld exploration and missions could feel a tiny bit repetitive at times and it did feel like it dragged on a little bit but it was always worth it when I reached the boss battles and was treated to something truly special each time. For me, gameplay scores 17 out of 20, and those controls, they're almost perfect. They score 19 out of 20. Despite having a limited experience with the series, this game was instantly recognisable as it used the same cell shaded art style as the previous titles. There were times in the game where certain areas will have camera filters on to replicate the style of the area and I thought this was a nice touch. There's a range of different styles in certain cutscenes as well, including the episodes each having an intro reminiscent to a 70s spy show and one with a retro anime feel. The UI is a blocky pixel art. As you and your opponent's health bars deplete, you can see it drain one pixel at a time. The arrows guiding you on special moves also take this form, which is a nice touch to help them stand out among all the chaotic action happening on screen. During combat, striking opponents will trigger a spray of cell shaded and pixelated blood that comes in all different colours. The gore effects in this game are brilliant and as over the top and fitting as everything else. Performance wise, there were unfortunately some frame rate dips when loading a new area in the overworld as well as some pop in when driving around. It was a shame this occurred, but luckily in the combat where it matters the most, I had no problems at all. Despite all the hectic fast paced action with multiple characters, attacks and gore effects happening all at once, it ran as smooth as butter. Now it's also worth noting that there is a minor patch already about to release, which should improve things further. The soundtrack has a punk rock style to it with a lot of fast paced music during battles, really getting you pumped up for the action. <laughs> There's a contrast between exploring the overworld on foot, as when you're on foot you have some quieter, more relaxed tones, but jump on the bike and the drums begin and the tempo increases. There are a lot of retro arcade style sound effects to accompany the action as well, which really are the icing on an over the top cake. Music could feel a little bit samey, you'll generally hear similar tracks throughout the game. One track I did enjoy is at the start of each episode. Here there's an interaction between characters. The voice acting is to a high standard as well. There's a lot of humorous writing that was delivered really well by the voice cast. Back in the day, I liked milk better. This is one aspect that keeps me invested in the game's story and world, with a lot of fourth wall breaking and references throughout. Although I should warn you, there are a lot of naughty words. Overall, the game is presented with a distinctive art style that gives the series its own identity, and despite some minor performance issues in the overworld, it's all very well executed and kept me invested for the whole of my playthrough. Graphics score 18 out of 20, and the audio scores 18 out of 20. No More Heroes 3 retails at £49.99 or your regional equivalent. The game itself took around 17 hours for me to beat the main story on normal difficulty. There are three difficulty settings to choose from at first, with a fourth ultra hard one unlocked after beating the game, as well as a new game plus. If you take into account the size of the adventure, as well as the extras there are to do with some optional collectibles, there's quite a lot to do here. 
and it's certainly replayable as you're given ranks for how well you perform in battles and can replay bosses as well using a time machine below the motel. I'd say for newcomers to the series, that price might seem a bit steep if you're unsure, but the first two games are available on the eShop at much lower prices if you want to look at those. But there is no denying how high quality a product this is and I'm sure fans of the series will not begrudge spending full price. But bear in mind, it can be found cheaper physically, depending on where you look. Value scores 18 out of 20. Aliens are dispatched into formation. What a shitty town. All recognized by the United States. To conclude, No More Heroes 3 is a fun, frantic, over-the-top action game that did start to feel formulaic as I went through it, but the battles never stopped being exciting to play. It has a striking art style, ran smoothly where it mattered, had a well-arranged soundtrack and excellent writing and performances that just didn't cease to bring a smile to my face. As a relative newcomer to the series, I found the story easy to follow, although I imagine people who know the characters will have an even better time. But with that said, it was still a brilliant experience that combined a fun cast of characters in a crazy world, and it gets a switch-up score of 90%. A big thanks to Dave for writing this one. I'm so glad you enjoyed it because there's nothing worse than having to slog all the way through a bad game let us know down in the comments what you think of this one i think we all know it looks absolutely amazing doesn't it i can't wait to play it and to all of our patrons who support us you guys are legends please leave comments down below let dave know how well he's done and as always for all things switch all the time keep it switch up cheers guys see ya